I read just a while back the writing of one that said it is the duty of every individual to daily awake and pray themselves happy in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Aren't you glad you're able to experience the presence of the Lord? Your soul can rejoice. Be restored. Hallelujah. Amen. I have certainly been enriched by the Spirit of the Lord and the Word of God in this meeting already and uh, am grateful for every kind act and every kind word and, um, I tell you we have such a large fruit and a gift basket in our room and it is so nice and uh, we've just been eating and eating and eating out of that and uh, I think my youngest daughter has laid claim to it Yesterday, uh, my oldest daughter, Megan, was trying to reach in there and get her a snack out. And I'm telling you, Mariah already thinks she's the ruler of the world. Surely informed her that she wasn't supposed to get anything else out of that basket. That is hers and hers alone. And uh, we appreciate the gift basket so nice. And... Uh, I'm glad for the work of the Lord that I feel in my heart the word of the Lord. I believe God's going to bless us in a good way with his word today. Would you stand with me? I, I would like to sing a chorus. I've never even practiced this song, but y'all sang it a little bit yesterday at the close of the message. Let's, let's sing Falling in Love with Jesus, all right? Falling in love. Jesus falling in love with Jesus falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever ever done sing it with me
I'd like for you to get your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Song of Solomon again today. Brother Weeks, I guess that was for you this morning. I have not rest, messed up that royally in a long time. Missing the key. and uh, But I always did that when I got nervous. And I must have stayed nervous most of my life. But... Um, I want to say that I appreciate Brother Weeks very much and uh, my close friend. And I want you to know I appreciate you today. God bless you. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, we will read verses 1 through 4. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Boy, you're like, where are we going today? <laughs> For thy love is better than wine. Because of the savor of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. Draw me, we will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. Amen. I got a simple message today I want to preach. I feel like the Lord uh, has directed me to preach this message. And um, it seems a little maybe flippant and silly title but I believe uh, that we will gain from this today I want to preach today out dancing the devil out dancing the devil hallelujah 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 amen amen why don't you praise the Lord with me hallelujah we love you Jesus we praise your word your name is wonderful your word God is effective. I believe you, God, to accomplish your perfect will. With this message today, inspire, encourage, and strengthen these young people in the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. If you're going to help me, you may be seated, and I believe you are. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we begin today this message with the young, pure, innocent, Shulamite in trouble. Her life up until this point has been spent in the country. For years, her brothers have kept a watchful eye over her. And uh, they have ensured her safety. Day in and day out, she has toiled. She has worked the ground of a vineyard. She has planted seeds, she's pulled weeds, she has trimmed branches. That's been her life up until this point. But now, things are different. The king's porters, King Solomon's porters, has brought her out of the country into the king's chambers. And the young lady who is used to hearing the sound of of birds singing and the rustle of leaves as the wind blows through the trees. Now, here's the clamor of the daughters of Jerusalem. And these ladies pelt her with questions. She's sitting in the king's chambers. The daughters of Jerusalem are around and they're curious concerning her. And they pelt her with questions and she is very self-conscious and she's out of her comfort zone. The, the, the Shulamite is used to being surrounded by family and, and, and now she, she's all alone. Her brothers are not anywhere near. Her beloved seems to be and is far from her in reality. And her mother is not Present. She, she's used to being surrounded by family, but, but now she is alone. And, and she's in a place that she never, ever wanted to be. 
And this is for her an hour of trouble. And not just an hour of trouble, but an hour of trouble that turns into an hour of temptation. She goes from an hour of trouble to a second hour of temptation. She's shy, she's timid, but she will not allow herself to be taken advantage of. She's shy, she's quiet, she's timid, but she is very strong-willed and she is very courageous. Some things she may have to suffer, some things she may have to endure, some things she did have to tolerate and put up with for a while, but one thing for sure, she would never compromise herself. To herself and to her shepherd, she would be true. You say, Brother Townley, how how did the Shulamite handle her hour of trouble? How did she successfully resist the seduction of Solomon in her hour of temptation? I, I'll show you how today. And uh, I, I want you to look back with me uh, to some scriptures. I want you to notice verse 4. Notice uh, chapter 1 and verse 4. The Bible says here, the king hath brought me into his chambers. And so she's there. And she's surrounded by the daughters of Jerusalem. She's in the king's harem. In her time of trouble, in her time of trouble, placed in a setting or a situation that I would call a hostile spiritual environment or atmosphere in this moment of trouble she recalls the love of her shepherd which it's not just an emotion that's within the shepherd but it is a love that has been expressed a love that has been shown a love that has been manifest she remembers the love that he had shown her and in the king's harem, she contemplates and she thinks of the affection shared between her and her beloved. She says to herself, this is verse 2, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. And, and so she contemplates and she thinks about her Beloved, her shepherd, who has expressed his love to her. And then, I want you to notice next, in verse 3, she speaks of the magnificence of his name and his presence. She said, because of the savor of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore, do the virgins love thee. Because of thy good ointments, thy name, thy name is as ointment poured forth. The, the invisible influence of perfume as, is as the presence of the Lord. And that magnificent presence has a powerful influence upon her being such that uh, uh, she magnifies and she thinks of the magnificent presence and name of her shepherd while she is in the presence of her seducer. Number three, she speaks of the magnetism of his personality. Verse four says, draw me. We will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. There's nobody like Jesus today, young people. There's no presence like the presence of Jesus. There is no name that is greater than the name of Jesus. 
And there is no greater power that can influence and draw and woo and satisfy the heart. Hallelujah. Amen. He has a magnificent name, a powerful presence, and, and a magnetic, uh, amen, personality. Young people, I wish today that I could tell you that there is a particular age that you can get to, that you can reach in which life stops bringing you trouble. I wish I could tell you today that, that there is a certain spiritual level that you can attain to on your spiritual journey that, that you'll never be tempted again, that, that you can get to a place to where all tests are passed and, and all trials are over and all temptation is behind you. The only way that ever happens is to make it to heaven. It would seem nice today if, if the Lord would take all of the thorns of the flesh out of our life. It, it would seem nice today if all spiritual hindrances would be removed and, and that every mountain would be taken out of our way. But you know what? It isn't like that. It, it isn't like that until we draw our last breath. There is a never ending battle with our flesh. Until we draw our last breath, uh, Satan will be working to sidetrack us uh, and destroy our souls. Um, Jesus taught that in this life uh, ye shall have persecutions. It's simple, familiar truth today. And so, so while I can't promise you a, a trouble-free life or a place uh, and a time in which you can arrive or attain to, in which you'll have no more tests, struggles, or trials, uh, I can promise you this today, uh, amen, that the Lord, by His Word and His abiding presence, has promised uh, to give you victory and overcome in power against all adversaries. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You have the promise of the Lord. His word has guaranteed you victory and overcoming power. Hallelujah. Let me remind you of three familiar promises from the scripture today. Number one, it's found in Isaiah 54 and verse 17. The, the, the prophet wrote these words, no weapon, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper no weapon that is developed that's come up with that's formed that's made against thee for the purpose of destroying you for the purpose of overcoming you the bible said there is not one that will prosper there's not one that can be successful and every tongue say with me every tongue and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Hallelujah. This is the heritage. This is a part of the privilege. This is a part of the inheritance of being a servant of the Lord. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There hath no temptation... There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. How many is familiar with these verses today? There's no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. You're not a lone ranger today. You may feel like a lone ranger. But there is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful. He never fails. He's always there whether you feel him or not. He's promised you victory. He's promised to see you through. God is faithful. That word also means trustworthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy of your trust in your hour of trouble. He's deserving of your trust in your hour of temptation. Doesn't matter how bright the lights get. It doesn't matter how the seducer paints a pretty picture of his way. Amen. Always remember that the Lord's way is best. Amen. And he deserves your trust at all times. God is faithful. Who will not? Everybody say he will not. 
who will not suffer. He will not allow you to be tempted or tested above that which ye are able. Look at your neighbor and say, you're able. You are able. He will... He will see to it that ye are able and will, everybody say will, will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to be able to bear it. You'll be able to escape the will of the adversary. He has a plan and a purpose to steal, kill, and destroy. But there is a way as you trust in the Lord and you lean on your beloved and you cast your cares on Him that you can have, escape, and bear, undergird, be able to sustain your trouble and trials. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And one more familiar scripture, and that is Jesus said... Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not, shall not prevail against it. And we as individuals make up the body of Christ. And, and so we understand the gates of the cities were, were the places where the leaders would meet and decisions were made and plans and strategies were created. And, and, and the Bible says here that it doesn't matter what the gates of hell come up with, what kind of strategy plan, what, what, how conniving, how sly it is. Amen. You as an individual, by being a part of the church of the living God, you got the promises of God with you that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper that there with the temptation comes a way of escape uh, amen the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church uh, I know it may seem like the devil's got a big plan and a powerful plan amen an effective plan thus far in your life uh, amen to destroy you but I want to encourage you today God is for you and if God be for you who can be against you Amen. The devil's ability to oppose your desire to be saved is not greater than God's ability to save you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hell's desire to destroy you is not greater than God's commitment to save you. The devil can't hurt you more than God can heal you. The devil can't cause you more trouble than God's able to work out in your life. I want you to believe these truths today. I want you to get it deep in your heart and deep in your soul. Hallelujah. God is with me and God being with me enables me to go through anything, overcome everything. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's a difference between testing and temptation, young people. The Lord will put you to a test. But temptation comes from within your being. When you desire that which is improper, wrong, sinful. Amen. And so testing and temptation is different. The Lord will bring you to a proving time. And even though the Lord cannot tempt with evil, neither can he be tempted with evil, there can be in our times of testing temptation. We can be tempted to become bitter. We can be tempted to become angry with what the Lord allows to come into our life. We can become angry and bitter at the people that, that do us wrong and the harm that comes to us. We can become angry and bitter at God. We can want to blame the pastor and the people of the church for not being a better church. I mean, it can just go on and on and on how that our times of testing can become times of temptation also. But, but I'm, I'm here to encourage you today that the lion, which is Satan himself, is on a leash in your life. That he can't come in and trouble you without the Lord's permission. And that if the Lord allows him to come in your life and create a, a time of testing and, and a time of trial, the Lord allows that not for you to become destroyed, not for you to become weakened, not for you to become depressed, not for you to get down and out. But God in his infinite wisdom has a plan and a purpose for that trying time in your life. And, and, and everything that he allows the devil to do in your hour of trouble, he has committed himself to turning all of that for your good. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. The Lord, 
The Lord is greater than our troubles and he's greater than our adversary. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when trouble comes into your life and the lion is unleashed, it seems. Remember, he's still on a leash and he can only go so far. And he can only create so much trouble. And he cannot create more trouble than God can fix as you lean on the Lord and trust in him. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Somehow we've got to get to the point in life and understanding of the scriptures and God, his power, his wisdom, his word, his work, that when the lion is unleashed to a point in our lives, that the Lord is allowing that to develop us, to mature us, to grow us, to make something out of us, to help us to get where He wants us to be and to become what He wants us to become. And so today, when, when, when we find ourselves under the pressure and the stress of the test, we got to learn to trust Him. Not become overwhelmed with the trouble, not become overwhelmed with... Amen. Our trials. Amen. I, 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 I tell you today, amen, the familiar scripture where the Bible said, Submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I know today that in our times of trouble, if, if we could just keep ourselves under the mighty hand of God, if, if we can in our times of testing keep that heart loyal and faithful to the God of heaven, if we, if we can in our times of heartache, amen, seek solace in the Lord, amen, and seek comfort from His presence, if we'll submit ourselves unto Him. One of the greatest ways we can submit ourselves to Him is through worship. It's through adoration. Amen. It's saying, God, I love you. You're king. You're Lord. You're sovereign. You reign supreme. Right now, God, I'm going through a tough time. Right now, I'm going through a hard time. Right now, oh Lord, I'm feeling pressure. But I'm not just going to sit here and become depressed. I'm going to push back a little bit, Lord. I, I want you to know I still love you. I want you to know I still trust you. I want you to know, God, I know you're faithful. I want you to know, God, I believe you're going to make a way where there seemed to be no way. I believe, God, in the fact that you are God alone and you're on the throne. I worship you. I adore you. I'm preaching this morning about outdancing the devil. I'm just telling you, amen, when the problems and the pressures of life get on you, amen, I'm telling you, you got a God who's great. You got a God who's king. You got a God who reigns supreme. You got a God who's a good shepherd. Amen. He's watching over your life. Amen. You can just come on to the house of the Lord and say, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I'm telling you in the midst of your darkest trial the presence of the Lord will surround you and comfort your heart uh, amen and bring a song back to your soul uh, he'll make the dark clouds roll away and the sun to shine again hallelujah hallelujah oh God help me to learn how to outdance the devil hallelujah when trouble comes my way teach me how to do like the Shulamite and say let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth let me feel his presence one more time all I need is him to touch me hallelujah 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 Hey man, this is working for me what I'm going through. I'm not happy about it. I don't like it, but I trust him. I believe in him. He's working all things for my good. Hey man, he's working victory in my life. Hallelujah. 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 And you know what? He'll see you through again and again and again. Amen. Ain't it amazing what a little bit of praising will do? Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing what the Lord did around here last night when we took a little time and blessed his name? Hallelujah. 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 Lift up those hands that hang down. Hallelujah. Lift them on up to the Lord. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy. God, you're great. God, you're deserving. God, I praise your wisdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will the Lord see you through, brothers and sisters? Will the Lord bring you through? Will the Lord bring you out? How many will testify today? Amen. That the Lord can turn all things for you good. Yes. And just as no weapon formed against you in the past is proper, prosper, no weapon in the future will prosper. Ask, ask David if the Lord will see you through. Trials can get long, but the Lord will see you through. He is faithful. I want to drive that home to somebody's heart right now. He's faithful. He's worthy of your trust in the good times. And he's worthy of your trust in the bad times. If you can trust him when the blessings come your way, trust him when the clouds roll in. He's bringing rain. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. David fought a long battle. It was many years from his anointing to where he was finally fully king of all of Israel. The Bible said in 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 1, And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all of his enemies. What a day. Hallelujah. The Bible said the Lord delivered him out of the hand of all of his enemies. And he had a song. Hallelujah. A song to sing. Amen. I'm telling you, some of you may be going through a dark night, but I feel morning breaking loose in your soul right now. I, I, I feel the reviving of the soul. I, I feel the restoring of the song, the restoring of joy, and the rejoicing of the soul that's been liberated hallelujah amen the bible said david sang these words in the day that the lord had delivered him out of all of his enemies and out of the hand of saul he said the lord is my rock my fortress my deliverer and he goes on he said he's my shield my high tower my refuge my savior the horn of my salvation Verse 4, he said, I will call on the Lord. I will call. We got a helper today. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Hallelujah. Amen. Look with me at verse 33 and 34 if you have your Bibles open. If not, you can just... Follow along. He went on to say it towards the close of that song. God is my strength and power. He maketh my way perfect. That word way is talking about a path. He makes my road a perfect road. That road and that perfect road is speaking of the way of truth. And integrity. He's able, he's able in my hour of trouble and the hour of temptation to keep me walking the right path, keep me walking the way of truth, living the life of integrity. When my heart is tested, when I'm angry, when I want to give evil for evil and I want to strike out, God is able. God is able. When I'm tempted and I'm carnal, he's able to help me to overcome my flesh. When I'm up against obstacles that I've never been able to win as of yet, I'm not going to throw in the towel. I believe he's able to make my way perfect. He's able to help me to walk the way of truth and live the life of integrity. Hallelujah. He goes on to say, he maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. Hallelujah. He'll enable me in my hours of testing and temptation to stay on the path of truth. He will make my feet like hinds feet, like a swift row. He will help me to escape. He'll help me to be able to get away. Whatever, whatever the enemy set up to trip me up, to hinder me, to destroy me, Hear me, young people. You need to believe today that the Lord is able. And he will keep you. 
He'll give you the wisdom. He'll give you the touch. He'll give you the power. He'll give you the grace. He'll give you what you need. Trust in Him today. He said, He'll make my feet like hinds feet and setteth me up on my high places. God's going to get me there. God's going to get me to those safe places. God's going to get me to where I'm secure. I may be a bit unsettled right now, but I believe God through your word, through the work of the Holy Ghost, you're able, God, amen, to make my feet like hinds feet and you're able to bring me to a safe place where I am strong and secure. That was the expectation of the prophet Habakkuk. He said, the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet. He will make. I'm counting on the Lord to do it. That's my expectation. That's what I'm believing. The Lord will make my feet like hinds feet. He will make me to walk up on mine high places. You're going to get there, young people. You're going to get there. God's got a great plan. God's got lofty purpose for your life. God will help you get there. Just commit yourself to it. And count on him to see it through and to take you where he wants you to go. Amen. The promise of the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 91, it says this. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. God in him will I trust. Surely, say with me, surely. Surely, it's meaning doubtless. Truly, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Hallelujah. The devil's a great enemy, but your flesh is your worst enemy. God's able to help you overcome your flesh, young people. Uh, Amen. Amen. The Lord's able to help you overcome your flesh. Amen. And so he, he is able to deliver us from the snare. Just like, just like the bird catcher, whatever, hides behind the rock. Or let's just say, make it easier, the, the young man that's got the net watching the butterfly fly. Butterflies just going through. I don't make a good butterfly, do I? The butterfly's just going along. I mean, unaware of the net. Unaware of the trap. Unaware of what is happening. The Bible says that the Lord is able to help us that when the snare of that fowler, when that net is poised and ready, you're coming near. Just the right time, the Lord can direct us, the Lord can prompt us, the Lord can move us. I I thought about it like this. I, I forgot this until right now. I remember one of my, my, my daughter's kids' stories. And it was a little wolf cub that got away from the pack. And Kay the snake realized the wolf cub, the little wolf cub got away. And the snake was slithering along. And as the snake slithered along, was sneaking up behind the little wolf cub. Little wolf. Boy, I feel like I'm in Sunday school now. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence today, I promise. The little wolf cub was going along. You know, that snake was just slithering around. And, I mean, you, you look at the picture. Me and Mariah looked at it. And, I mean, Kay's got his mouth. I mean, just, little old bitty wolf cub. And Kay, what, was, what it was before he tried to get the wolf cup, the wolf cup was standing on a little rock like this, looking around, didn't know what was going on. All of a sudden, the little wolf cup just goes, boom, 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 hops off, and that was just at the perfect time, and Kay comes down and, wow, smashes his mouth on that stone. And 
it happened again another way I mean he's down drinking some water the little wolf cub and Kay is sneaking up behind him and he's about to strike the little wolf cub just bounds away he just gets a mouthful of water misses the wolf cub I'm telling you the Lord is able to help you to escape the snare of the fowler yes he is I'm believing that today. I want you to leave this camp believing that. Hallelujah. Your faith is not in vain. Your trust is not to no end. Hallelujah. Your faith in the Lord will be rewarded. The Bible said they that put their hope in God shall not be ashamed. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Now listen. I'm, I'm moving down towards the end of this message. Oftentimes, oftentimes we focus on what Satan was allowed to do in causing trouble and fail to realize what he was not permitted to do in our lives. All we see is how God said yes to his request to test. But we fail to see the many times God told the devil no. When Satan had his plan all set up and God messed it up. Amen. God told Satan concerning Job, you can touch his body. We see the trouble. You can wreck his world around him. But he went on to say, but you can't take his life. And so when Moses died... When Moses died, demons came to take his body. But Michael the archangel said, The Lord rebuke you. The Lord forbid you. I'm just telling you today, we think we know how good God has been to us. And, and by what we know, God has been good to us. But I, I'm going to tell you today and present to you, I, I'm not sure I really know how good God's been to me. Because I know a lot of times he did allow trouble to come my way and he's delivered me out of it every time. But I don't know how many times he's kept trouble out of my life. I don't know how good God's been to me. He's been a good shepherd. He's been a good God. Amen. In what I know, he's been good. But how much more in that I don't know what the Lord has kept from happening in my life. Amen. We don't know how good God's been to us in the limiting of Satan. We don't know how good God's been to us in, in the sense of angelic activities that have helped us and assisted us in the invisible world keeping catastrophes from happening. Listen to what Exodus says. The Lord said, If thou wilt diligently hearken and wilt do that which is right and wilt give ear to the commandments and keep the statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Deuteronomy 7.15 says, And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. I'm just trying to tell you if you'll love God, fall in love with Jesus, walk with him, serve him, there's a lot of things that will never happen. I want you to know with whatever happens, if trouble comes, you can outdance the devil. When that spirit of heaviness comes on you, take the garment of salvation and praise. Hallelujah. Put on that garment of praise and, and just say, God, I love you. I worship you. I praise you. And he'll put the dance back in your step. I promise. You can outdance the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. But even, even in this, you can outdance the devil in God. Keeping things from happening in your life. He said, just walk with me. Just love me. Just serve me. I can keep a lot of things out of your life. 
I can keep a lot out of your life. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we, 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 we have to count our blessings not by what has happened. We need to count our blessings by what has not happened. Psalmist said, keep me, keep me as the apple of thy eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. For the wicked that oppress me from, from my deadly enemies, Lord. Keep me from my deadly enemies who compass me about. They are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth they speak proudly. They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. Like as a lion that is greedy for his prey. As it were a young lion lurking in secret places. He's setting up. He's getting ready. He said, arise, O Lord. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, I'm asking you. I see the setup. I recognize it. I want to see you glorious. I want to see you high and lifted up. Cast down the will and the work of the enemy. The Lord did it for Joseph. He had responsibility of the Christ child. Herod wanted to kill him. The Bible said, and being warned of God in a dream, that they should not return to Herod. They departed into their own country another way. The Lord visited with a dream. Herod was there to destroy, but the Lord spoke in a dream, gave direction. They was able to avoid the trouble that the enemy was setting up. Second Kings 6 and 8, the Bible said the king of Assyria, or Syria, warred against Israel. He took counsel of his servants and saying, where should I put my camp? He put his camp in a certain place. They was ready to ambush Israel when they come through. But you know what happened? The Lord had spoken to the prophet and the prophet had got the word to the king of Israel and said, don't pass that way today. I'm coming to a close. You still with me, young people? The Lord said, don't pass that way. Don't go there. And so it was that the enemy was set up. He thought he was setting up, but he got set up. And the enemy, the enemy was ready to strike, but the Lord allowed his people to go another way. And the Bible said he not only did it once, he not only did it twice, he did it more than twice. He did it again and again and again. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, young people, the Lord that's brought you out and brought you safely thus far is going to keep taking care of you. You fall in love with him, you love him and serve him and trust that he's able to guide your life. He'll do it again and again and again and again. I, I, I'm telling you today, there is no way that I can let you know the measure of grief, turmoil, heartache, headache, or distress, you can save yourself by simply falling in love with Jesus. The Shulamite is there. She's in the chambers. The daughters of Jerusalem are around her. She's in her hour of trouble. What is she going to do? She says, in her own words, there's nothing like his ointment. There's nothing like his presence. He's got a name. Oh, what a name. What a name. Oh, draw me. Draw me. Draw me. We love you. The undefiled want you. I love you, shepherd. I, I, I'm just trying to tell you there's a way you can make it through your times of trouble and testing. Amen. Replace that oppressive atmosphere with the presence of God, with the high praise of God in your mouth and the thoughts of God's faithfulness and God's goodness. You can outdance the devil. I'm telling you, you can outdance the devil. Amen. That hour of temptation, that hour of trouble can become an hour of triumph for you. A time of, of, of great glory and rejoicing. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me, let me show you how I'm going to finish this today. I, I want to give you a little practical 
practical visual to end this today. She thought of her beloved and she changed her spiritual atmosphere. She didn't just stay there and allow the enemy to attack her mind. You know what the Bible says concerning even immoral sins? Flee fornication. Don't stay there and fight it. Get up and go. Get out. Change the environment. If you're getting oppressed, depressed, and discouraged, turn you on some good Holy Ghost music. Start talking to the Lord. There's a way you can outdance the devil. I need nine young men right quick. Nine. Praise God. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need one more. Nine. Since y'all were willing to be first, I'm going to make y'all a blessing. Get, get, get each one a piece of paper. I need nine more young men. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need one more. Come on, brother. You're up. I'm sorry. Y'all trouble. All right. All right. I need y'all to spread out across this front. I need distance between every person. Blessings. I, I want. I want blessings. Uh, I, I want blessings in the back. All right. <laughs> Trouble in the front. Let, let me just kind of see how I'm gonna set you up. Stretch on out. Stretch out. We gotta have some space here. Life is a long journey sometimes. <laughs> Come on. I want, now I want trouble to come on up. Come on up, trouble. You got to give me some dancing room. Blessing. All right, trouble. You're trouble, right? You blessing. All right. All right, trouble. Give me, give me a little bit of space. I don't know, I don't know where the Lord's going to lead me here. <laughs> trouble. Why don't you go back there where blessing is? Bring blessing right back up here. There we go. Come on, blessing. Trouble, trouble, you go back there. Come on, blessing, come back up here. How many, man, I got all, is all the trouble over here? Man, I need some blessings. Come on, I need some blessings over here. Come on, troubles, give me a couple. There's a trouble, yeah. All right. Now I'm going to tell you, this is the way it happens. If you'll just walk with God, young people, just love God. Fall in love with Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. There's nothing like His presence. You'll never experience anything like the presence of Jesus. He'll never do you harm. He'll always do you good. Love Jesus. Love Jesus. Get up in the morning. Talk to the Lord. Get up in the morning and walk with God. Just say, Jesus, you're everything to me. I trust you. You're a good God. I thank you for the blessings of a pastor. I thank you for the blessings of Lord Jesus. Uh, of saints, I thank you for a good church to come to, Lord. You've you've been good to me, Lord. You've never failed me. Woo! I'm blessed, Lord. You start going through life, and all you know. Hey, I, I need some I need some dancing music. Fall in love with Jesus. That'd be a good one, wouldn't it? I don't know how to dance. I was raised in church. All I know how to do is dance for the Lord. <laughs> Falling in love with Jesus. Mm-hmm. Falling in love with Jesus. I was going to go this way today with something. Falling in love with Jesus. I really don't know right now what he's got. But there's something just pulling me this way. The best thing I've ever, ever done. Falling in love. Well, I don't know why, but something just starts moving me like this right here. Zuz. What do you have on here? I know why. Falling in love. out dance the devil you just walk with God you just let him order your steps follow the leading of the Holy Ghost he'll walk you right around 
worldly conversations. You might not have known what was going to go on, but you just, this is what you felt like doing. Right in the godly communication. In his arms, I feel. You guys got to hold your sign up. I'm not God, but I'm pretty good. I made those, but I'm not a creator. <laughs> Connected. I felt drawn that way. I just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. There's no place I'd rather, rather be. In his arms, yeah. In his arms. I don't know why, but I just don't feel like going over there today. I just feel like praying for a little while. the blessing comes my way oh yeah I'm just telling you this is a love affair that's what it is there's no way that life will ever be without this I wish to God it would be but life's full of trouble but we got a good shepherd we got a good shepherd I'm out dancing the devil. How about you? I'm out dancing the devil. I just love God. I'm walking with Him. I'm living for Him. Learning how to dance with the hand of God. No place I'd rather, rather be. You know what? He's lifting it up. He wants me to see it. That's not what I want. Brother Alexander the Elder, he's 92 years old. Where I now pastor, he retired at 87 years old. He's 92, he's still with me. This is one of his favorite sayings. He'd say, stand back, old world. I don't want anything you have to offer. make it look as good as you want to but I know there's a dark side to those bright lights you know what we just go through life enamored with the glory of God because there's nobody like him can't nobody do me like Jesus <laughs> enamored with glory ignoring the world Going from strength to strength, faith to faith, glory to glory. God bless you. How many wants to walk with the Lord and allow Him your relationship with Him? Thank you, brother, and just help you to outdance the devil. He's a sly old fox, but he's not near as wise as our God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Key of G, please. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. I'm going to pick up the tune. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. Hey, when I was in trouble, you came to my rescue. Nobody but you, Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sing it from your heart. Oh, nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. You know what the Bible does say? Praise Him in a 
dance, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Give his aid. 
Symbols, symbolic objects, the rainbow, a symbol of God's covenant, a stairway, a symbol of the way to God, thunder, lightning, clouds, and smoke, symbols of God's majesty, thunder, a symbol of God's voice. Trumpets, a symbol of God speaking. The pillar of cloud and fire, a symbol of guidance. A throne, a symbol of God's glory. Dry bones, a symbol of spiritual death. White hair, a symbol of wisdom. The wind, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Fire, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Stars and lampstands, symbols of God's ministers. A signet ring, a symbol of authority. Arrows, symbols of God's judgments. A scepter, a symbol of God's rule. The capstone, a symbol of preeminence. A rock, a symbol of stability. The human body, a symbol of interdependence. Grass, a symbol of human frailty. Symbolic creatures, the serpent, a symbol of Satan's subtlety. Locus, a symbol of God's judgment. Beast, symbols of earthly kingdoms. Dove, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. A lamb, a symbol of Jesus Christ's sacrifice. Symbolic actions, breaking a jar, 
a symbol of the destruction of Jerusalem. The cursing of a fig tree, a symbol of judgment. Washing hands, a symbol of innocence. Being thirsty, a symbol of spiritual need. Baptism, used for salvation and a symbol of cleansing. The Lord's Supper, a symbol of union with Christ. Anointing, a symbol of empowering by God's Spirit. Harvesting, a symbol of judgment day. Tearing garments, a symbol of anger and sorrow. Spitting, a symbol of contempt. Shaking off dust, a symbol of rejection. Sitting in sackcloth and ashes, a symbol of repentance. Lifting of hands, a symbol of prayer. Covering the head, a symbol of submission. Symbols expressing God's nature and character, God's face, a symbol of his presence. God's arm or hand, a symbol of his power. God's eye, a symbol of his awareness. God's ear, a symbol of God's listening. God bless you. Thanks for watching.